Hello and welcome football fans to another championship edition of the Squirtle Pater Pick'em Show sponsored by Maples, Knicks, and Diesel Horace Law Firm. Hard to believe that this is our final Pick'em Show of the Oklahoma High School football season. We have three games to pick on the show this week. The state championship games for classes 2A, A, and B. We'll also do a recap of the state championship games from last weekend in the other classes. Our panel tonight has Mark Rogers and four coaches. Lynn Shackelford, head football coach and athletic director at Cashin. Jeff Craig, the head football coach and AD at Blanchard. Justin Jones, the head football coach at Norman North. We all had on last week. And finally, we have Coach Mendenhall on from Oklahoma Bible Academy. Coach, uh, your, your Trojans had an incredible year. I know the loss on Friday to Sealing still stings uh, around your program. But give us a recap of your season and what's to come for OBA in 2023. Yeah, uh, well, kudos to Mark because right off the bat, he called us a dark horse. And uh, we f- we felt like that. Like, we felt like we could make some noise. I didn't mean that in a uh, sarcastic I way. I against you guys too many times this year. I thought you should just – you should rip me. But you guys – no, I, I gotta, I'll give Adam a bunch of credit for that too and Tom, yeah. the guys that had seen you play all season long. And, and, and uh, um, congratulations. What a great year you guys had. That yeah. was uh, It was awesome. And I mean it. I mean, you gave us respect and a lot of people we didn't feel like, um, you know, didn't early on and and we nothing against them. They just didn't know, you know, but we were used to playing cash in every year and the Fairviews and I mean, Ringling a couple of years. I mean, so our guys weren't 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 afraid of, um, you know, new challenges, I guess you'd say. And so for us, it was an awesome year. Um, you know, kudos to the seniors from last year who actually forfeited their chance to go to the playoffs just to have to play independent for a year. Uh, we had some injuries that left us with like two linemen um, and they just made a decision like this is what we're gonna have to do. Uh, and they just took one for the team and they're great. Uh, we had, you know, we had four seniors this year, lose a really good quarterback. Uh, Buddy Boyson, you guys talk about him a lot. Uh, Jake Colby, Harry Nunez, Holden Caul- uh, Caulfield. That's a novel. Holden Caldwell. Uh, and uh, they were awesome. They just grew. I mean, two of those kids didn't even play football until eighth grade. Uh, Jake Colby and Bodie Boyson were linemen uh, in seventh grade, eighth grade. Uh, Bodie started playing quarterback his eighth grade year, and you see what happened to him. So they just developed. They did everything we asked. And then at the end of the day, you know, they won 20 straight games uh, over the last two years until the loss against Sealing last Friday. So we were so proud of them. We got a lot of – we got a big junior class, our whole line basically, both our running backs coming back. We're going to have to have someone hand the ball off, um, figure that out. But – you know, Coach Cheatham and Coach Kayot working with the line have just made an unbelievable difference. It's, it's kind of fun at OBA to be able to have a good line, like in the sense of just a lot. We've always had to play like one or two receivers on the line, you know. Uh, playing eight man and playing our size uh, of schools has been really, really fun because, um, you know, the guys put in the work. So, well, again, I know that was a tough way to go out on Friday against a really good ceiling team that we'll talk about here in a few minutes. But what an incredible season for – OBA looking to see or look forward to seeing what uh, the Trojans can do under Coach Kayot and, and you and Coach Cheatham here in the next uh, next few years. Let's go ahead and start with our Pick'em games, and we'll start in Class 2A. We have the matchup that uh, pretty much everyone predicted we would have when the brackets came out a few weeks ago. Washington has been number one all season, and this will be the Warriors' third straight championship game. Millwood has a ton of football tradition that, that of course, everybody knows about, but missed the playoffs last year. The Falcons are 13-1 and one this season with 13, 13 straight wins after a week zero loss to 3A champion Heritage Hall. This game will be played on Saturday at 1 at Richmond Stadium at UCO. Mark Rogers, let's we'll start with you. Well, a ton of tradition for these two programs. Um, you've got uh, Millwood's won the last eight finals that they've been in. They've won seven of them. Uh, they did beat Washington in a final. Um I like Washington at the beginning of the season and they have, uh, I think they've played well enough to earn the favorites uh, status here. So I, they're, they really are. Um, if, if you look even at the class a game, Washington's got a couple of tight ends that are really good. Fairview is the same way. Uh, I think Gore's got some big kids that can really play and that are tough to block along the line of scrimmage. And I think the versatility that Washington has on offense is uh is going to be the difference in this game, but I got to give Coach uh, Franklin a lot of credit at at Millwood because they were four and six last year's the first losing season that he had at the school, and he went out and he got some kids out of the um, 
the gym to come play football. Jaden Nickens is one of them that's already got an offer from Oklahoma State, and he's only played football for one year. Um, this could go either way. I think it's going to be a close game. I don't think it'll be a blowout, but I'm going to I'm going to pick Washington. And Mark, you're calling this game for NFHS. Is that correct? That's correct. The, the, both games, uh, the two A and the A on Saturday. Very good, Coach Shack. Let's go to you. Um, I, you know, I kind of agree with Mark. I think you kind of looked at both of these teams having a having a realistic shot to to win a state championship whenever the whenever the playoffs started. Um, I've been on the Washington train all year. Uh, I think their I think their kids are are ready to, as I've said before, kind of kick the door down and and finally uh, finally win a win a gold football. And um, I'm gonna. I'm going to go with that experience a little bit uh, on Saturday. I think there there is something to be said about about being in that game and playing in that game before. Uh, I think you can look at this past weekend with some of those guys that had been there versus some of the ones that hadn't, and I think it kind of it really showed through uh, mm-hmm. last week. And uh, I think it's going to be a tremendous football game, but I'm going to give the edge to Washington just because just because they've been there before, um, and I, I just. For some reason, I just think it's it's their turn. Uh, it's their turn to win it. So I'm going to go with the Warriors. We're going to give uh, Coach Mendenhall a little bit of a pass this week. You know, he's been he's been watching game film to, to prepare for uh, Balco Forgan and Dewar and Sealing and some of these teams. Coach Jones, you've had a full week uh, to watch every two A A and B game uh, there <laughs> that we have on Squirtle. So we're going to go to you to uh, to to uh, call Washington versus uh, Millwood for us. Yeah, you know, I, I think. Uh, you know, really looking at uh, some Millwood tape this week and, and from their game uh, last week. And, you know, I think the one thing you look at Millwood uh, is just how explosive they are young, um, but but can really score in a hurry. I think anytime you're in a championship game, um, that can keep the door open uh, for uh, a team like that. And, and then you, you flip over to Washington, who, who is the more experienced team uh, as far as being at this level. Um, I think Washington's a complete team. Uh, not just what they do on offense, but their ability to uh, play defense and, and really uh, match up. I think they can do a variety of things. I think uh, what Coach Beller and Coach Colbeth, uh both do on their respective sides are um, are, are very imp- impressive. Um, you know, I think the big thing for Washington is is just like Shaq said is they've got to break down the door. And, uh, you know, they, they've been here, um, you know, at some point in time, if, if Millwood can keep this game uh, close for for the first three quarters to get into that fourth quarter into a dogfight, uh, you might make uh, Washington question it a little bit. I think it'll be a close game. Uh, it's going to be exciting to see uh, if, if Washington uh, can contain uh, the, the speed and athleticism of Millwood and really uh, limit the shot plays. If they can do that, then obviously I think they're going to win the game. But uh, much like the panel, I think this is Washington's year. Uh, they played really good football, and I think they're – uh, poised it to, to really uh, kick this thing in on Saturday. So my pick will be Washington. Coach Craig. I kind of uh, – that one stat that Mark, you know, shot out there was was kind of eye-opening, you know, with Millwood winning eight – what was that, seven out of eight championships. And, uh, you know, that – there's something to be said about success on uh, on championship Saturday or championship Friday, whatever day it falls on. But, uh, you know, it, it – you kind of reiterate what everybody else has said. You know, I know Millwood's very explosive. You know, the Hunt kids are a load to handle. But uh, I think we, you don't realize the speed that Washington possesses as well, along with some of the sides. So I think they can. I think they can match up speed wise. Um, I just I, I I like their experience. I like the the combination of things that they can throw at you. Like Mark said, with the double, with the two tight ends, you know, the speed on the edges, the, the speed in the backfield. I I just think that uh, this is Washington's year and uh, like everybody else, I, I, I expect it to be a close game. I look for a good, a really good, exciting matchup and, uh, and one of the more fun games to watch, but uh, got to give the edge to Washington this year. I think it's their turn. Coach Minnehill. Yeah, I'm not going to add anything to what these guys have said the last few weeks. Uh, I did see a little bit of Millwood film uh, on a Squirtle stream, and they are really good. Uh, I I would I really look forward to watching this game. Uh, but I've also listened to what you guys have said about Washington. Uh, most shows this season, and I watched them a little bit on Paydirt, so I'm going to also go with Washington. 
both uh, both Millwood and Washington are Squirtle Network schools, so obviously we're, we're very proud of them, very happy for them. And by the way, the audio stream, uh, Washington will have this game streamed on audio, WashingtonWarriors.tv. So if you're out uh, out and about driving around and can't watch uh, Mark's feed, be sure to tune into WashingtonWarriors.tv for the audio feed from Washington Warriors. All right, let's go to our second Pick'em game, and we'll go to Class B. Ceiling Avenge, their only loss of the season, a big way against OBA last Friday. We talked about that. Laverne advanced uh, to the finals with a 52-28 win over Velma Alma on Friday night. Adam Dieselhorst and I called that ceiling OBA game on Friday, and we talked a lot about how hard it is to beat a team twice in one year. Ceiling had the revenge factor last week, uh, avenging that loss to OBA early in the year. But on their other side of that this week, as the Wildcats defeated Laverne, Back on September 9th, uh, 40 to 38. Wolverine, obviously the defending state champion there in class B. Coach Mendenhall, this is this is your class. Uh, you you've watched a lot of film on both of these teams. So give us your rundown on the class B finals. Yeah. Um, yeah, that game early in the year, we played ceiling the week after, and we that actually helped us. They had a little bit of a letdown, and we, you know, we knew that going in that they were gonna uh, it's hard to play, win a game like that. I, I think they were up by 30 or something points early on in that game against Laverne uh, the first time. Laverne fought back, and the uh, ceiling had a, a clutch touchdown catch late in the game uh, to seal it. And, you know, I, it was an awesome game to watch on film. And, you know, I hope I hope it's the same way this, uh, this Friday night. I think that, you know, are they going to have the same revenge factor like ceiling had against us? You know, I don't know. I haven't talked to any Laverne guys, but I know I know that Coach Cox does an awesome job, and those guys out there do a great job. Uh, uh, you know, just classy. Laverne's just classy people. Um, they do things right. They win right. Um, and that says a lot. Now, if you're comparing scores over the last few weeks, it, it almost looks like they're banged up a little bit. I have, I don't know. Um, but just seeing some of the scores compared to earlier on in the year when they blew through that really hard, the hardest district in the state, B1, um, and and be some of those teams that were that are really good all the time. Uh, it, it makes me wonder a little bit. Obviously, you got to have you have to stop Felix Teal, the running back playing quarterback um, right now. So, um, so if Ceiling can stop him, you know, that's the key. Uh, and if they can't, then, you know, it's anyone's game for sure. So, uh, you know, on Ceiling side of the ball, they controlled the box against us uh, a lot better last week than they did early on in the year. And so if they if they control line of scrimmage again, uh, they're winning. Uh, and, you know, I know Laverne has some guys. And like I said, they're, they've got that tradition there. And that's, that's going to be the interesting factor to me is, is how much is that going to matter? How much is their revenge factor on their side? Um, but overall, if, if you know, if it is what it is, and and what I if they control the line of scrimmage, like did against us, then I'm going to go ahead and pick ceiling to win. Mark Rogers. Well, I would defer to Jay. He knows a lot more about this than I do. Um, I think that this is the first time that ceilings beat Laverne in eight man, uh, 13 game winning streak for. Laverne going into this and the, the last time that ceiling won, they were both playing 11 man football. So um, Caden Manuel is a really good player. Uh, it, is, it could be a cool situation because Gary Manuel won a state championship uh, at Snyder as a player was a really good athlete at Northwestern Oklahoma state and, and could be a father son championship there. So I think that clearly Laverne has incredible tradition since 2008, they got four titles. They got four runner-ups. Um, but I think that Ceiling prepared itself with their really tough schedule. I mean, they so they, they've been here. They've got the confidence of having knocked them off the first time. Uh, and I, I kind of agree. I, I mean, I would have uh, – I, I lean towards Ceiling. I think it'll be pretty close. Of course, the first game was two points, 40 to 38. Um, so I, I think that – I think that Ceiling will have a, a pretty good chance to uh, – to get the job done and win the state championship. Coach Shaq. Um, I, I stood on the sidelines and watched OBA play against Dewar uh, and actually watched some film of OBA and Ceiling before that game, uh, getting ready for this show. And uh, I was, I was no, no offense, Jay, I was really surprised with, uh, with what happened last weekend. So that being said, Ceiling must be playing really well. Um, it, it I think Andy, you mentioned this early on. It's it's really really hard with high school kids to uh, to beat somebody twice in a season, um, especially when you know your 
both teams are talented and both teams are, are really well coached. So I, I do think there'll, there'll be a little bit of that. Uh, again, I think, you know, Laverne, this is not a, not a new experience for them to go, to go play in a state championship game. Um, I think it's going to be a tremendous football game on, uh, on Friday night, probably a, I wouldn't be shocked if it's in the 50s or 60s uh, when it's all said and done, because I think both coaches do, do a really good job of, of getting the ball into their playmakers' hands. And in eight man, if you've got some of those, it can you can play really good defense, and it doesn't matter. But uh, the gym in Laverne is uh, named Shackleford Hall, so uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with Laverne just because I, I think I'm pretty sure it's named after a superintendent that was somehow related to me. I've been on this road before, but I got bored and stopped. But um, so I'm going to I'm going to take Laverne just because uh, just because of that. But I think I think it'd be a great game Friday night. Coach Craig, well, you got to love that insight on uh, that selection. I, I don't have any – nothing named after me in either town, so uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to have to take a shot in the dark on this one. But, uh, you know, I, I I had ridden OBA on my, you know, previous two weeks, you know, with the, the pick over Dewar and, uh, and, and going with them last week. And so, like Shaq said, obviously Sealing's playing really well right now. And uh, I, I, that was impressive, uh, an impressive victory because uh, I, I really felt like OBA had the shot to win that one. And uh, so with that being said, and, you know, with my total insight on what's going on there in, in, in this classification, I, I just – I think I'm going to go with ceiling on that. I just – I feel like they're playing really well right now. Not so much a revenge factor just uh, with those two because it was so close the first time, but uh, – um, you know, a turnover here or there or a mistake here or there could cost one of them a, a championship. But uh, um, I was impressed with Sealing's victory last week, so I'm going to ride Sealing on this one. Let's go to our eight-man expert, Coach Jones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right there in my wheelhouse. Uh, you know, I, I think for me, uh, you know, obviously paying attention to it uh, this week and, and, and getting to actually watch some tape this week I think helped, uh, you know, uh, what an incredible job uh, in, in, in both teams have done. And, uh, you know, I, I, Laverne with the, their tradition, it's always hard uh, this time of year to go against uh, tradition and teams and, and coaches that have been there, done that. Um, I think, you know, you just look at recent history just last week about the teams and the tradition that, uh, you know, won out, uh, you know, last week in, in, in their championships. But then you look at ceiling. Um, and what they've been able to do, you know, I do believe in, in uh, <clears throat> high school football, it's hard to beat someone twice. I, I think what Sealing has going for it is jumping out to the lead and then um, having Laverne come back and make that a close game really, I think, keeps the Sealing kids uh, locked in and understanding uh, what Laverne can do. And, and so, you know, looking at this and, and, you know, trying to go off scores that are very similar, uh, I'm going to go with Sealing uh, to win the championship. That Class B finals game will be played on Friday night at 7 at Northwestern in Alva. Northwestern did a great job hosting us uh, last week with that OBA ceiling game. So thanks thanks to those guys. They do a great job there at NWOSU in Alva. All right, let's go to our Squirtle game of the week. This is the last, uh, the last football game that we played in the state of Oklahoma this year. We'll go to Class A. The Fairview Yellow Jackets are 14-0 after a 38-22 win over Colcord. In the semifinals, Gore is also 14-0 after an eyebrow-raising 48-12 win over a really good Hominy team last week. This game will be played at 7 p.m. on Saturday night at UCO. Mark Rogers. Can't wait for this. It should be good. Uh, the three Fairview grads that are uh, with us right now, um, you guys should be really proud of the, of the community and the team. Uh, it was an army of uh, fans from both sides that were there in Hera on Saturday. They treated Coach Shaq and I uh, pretty well, especially uh, Alyssa Antoine, who brought her world-famous cookie bars to me. Uh, they're all gone. Um, I don't know how many Shaq had, but I think it was like one, and they were probably 15 there. <laughs> they're delicious. Uh, <clears throat> I need to go see if, if uh, Coach uh, Jones will give me a key to the weight room over there at Norman North. It's not very far from my house. Um, Listen, the uh, Fairview is loaded with a bunch of dudes that can really play. Caden Pettis had a tremendous game. 
on Friday night. He was incredible. Austin Hauk was really good. Um, Blake Perez is runs behind a lot of these big guys. And then Jax Bernard is uh, a really good small school quarterback. So Gore, on the other hand, um, 22 seniors. And if you look at some of these small schools that have played, uh, like, for example, last year, the class 2A state championship, Marlowe had 80 players. I mean, that's kind of a ridiculous number for a class A school to have 22 seniors is hard to imagine. Um, I was going to give I, I gave Shaq some bad information, too, on uh, um Friday, and I think he knew it, and I think he just didn't want to show me up. But anyway, Brandon Tyler, he played collegiately at Northeastern, and his roommate was Matt Weber, not Jody Weber. So, and I and I heard that he was a barefooted punter. So I don't know if it was in Gore, if they didn't have shoes or what. But anyway, but he was a barefooted punter. But he's one heck of a of a coach. He was 128 and 25 in 12 years at Vian. Uh, he's 60 and 10 now at Gore. And when he took over, they'd had back to back losing seasons. And this is the furthest that Gore's ever made it. They've never played an in a state championship game before. Um, I'll give you two more numbers on him real quick and then I'll shut up. Gore's been 17 playoff games. And um, with Brandon, he's been involved in, I think he's been involved in 11 of those, um, eight as a player, or excuse me, eight as a coach and then a couple as a player. So it, it's pretty impressive what he's been able to do uh, there at, at Gore. Um, and then this has got a chance to be the, the highest scoring 11 man team in Oklahoma history. They come into the game with 805 points. I think uh, the number one team was Frederick of 2014. And then the number two team was Vianne of 2014, which was also coached by Brandon Tyler. So uh, he can coach some offense. He's coached on both sides of the football I've seen Gore play. I've seen Fairview play. And when we saw Fairview play early in the season against Hooker, it looked like a state championship team to me. <clears throat> I'm going to give a slight lean to Fairview here. Mark mentioned three Fairview grads. Uh, the people at home probably can't see Adam Diesehorst. He's he's on the Zoom. But oh, he's, Lord, he's omnipresent. He's always he's always around. <laughs> <laughs> the eye in the sky. Yeah, really making sure Shaq doesn't say something needs to be edited out <laughs> later. It's so always, uh, Adam always. is here to watch us. Just can't hey, quick draw. Quick draw on the button. I don't I don't know where Jake has been. I'll tell you, I mean, but I heard that he got suspended. Um, I'm not sure <laughs> at the end of the season, but uh he's the one that you had to keep the dumb button on for sure. <laughs> Coach Zach, let's go to you, class A, fair view versus score. I, I think this is gonna be a, a really, really good football game. Uh, Saturday night. Um, I've watched Fairview play live twice now. Um, call cord was good. They were really good, big and fast and physical. Uh, and I mean, I thought, I thought the game probably should have been a lot worse than what the final score was. Uh, call cord had a few things that, that, you know, they kept kind of coming back to, but uh, Fairview had a, had a whole bunch of options to, to move the football. Um, and I, I tell you what, defensively, they're, they're impressive. They're, they're front five and uh, their two linebackers are really, really good. Their secondary players come downhill and, and, uh, and get in the run game. Uh, so they're, they're literally playing 11 on 11 uh, whenever the ball snapped on defense, which doesn't happen a lot. Uh, especially in Class A, where you get corners and safeties that are real excited about going and tackling running backs, but um, they definitely have them. I watched uh, I watched the Gore Hominy game today. Coach Tyler sent it to me, and that was a that was a beatdown. Uh, Gore took Hominy apart from the very beginning of that football game. They're they're good. Uh, coach Tyler is a, he's a really good friend of mine, and he can he can coach some football offensively. They're they're really good. They're their schemes are, are tremendous. Uh, they don't throw it a ton, but they can when they're kind of whenever they want to. And they, when they pick and choose their spots to throw it, it's normally really, really successful. But they got a running back that's fast and can run, quarterback that's fast and can run. Uh, their schemes are really good. I, you know, I, I've, I've been on Fairview. I, you know, I said a couple of weeks ago, I didn't think anybody could play them within a couple of touchdowns. And then Stroud turned around and did that, you know. Uh, but then they kind of took care of business last week. But <clears throat> Gore's Gore's the real deal, and I think this game's going to come down to what most f 
football games do when two teams play. Who who doesn't make the most mistakes is probably going to win this one. Who doesn't turn it over? Uh, who doesn't have a crucial penalty? Uh, something like that. But um, you know, I I'm going to go against the grain probably. You know, I went with Gore last week because you know the the heartstrings from my mom and dad going to going to high school there, and uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that even. So there's three guys from Fairview on here that are probably going to, you know, be mad at me and a whole bunch of other people in Fairview that probably will. And I probably won't get any cookie bars anymore, but um, it'll be a, it, it'll, it'll be a great game. You know, the, the thing that you know I, I think will be important too, and coach Tyler has been in the finals, so he knows, you know, what this week's going to be like in those small towns and it's going to be nuts. You know, there's going to be bonfires and former players coming back to talk to the team and, you know, everybody's going to want to get, want to get involved and the, the week's going to be, unlike any other week these kids have ever had. So, with, you know, what coach can kind of deal with all that throughout the week and still get their kids ready to play is going to be, uh, is going to be important. And since, since Brandon has been there before, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to give a little bit of an edge to Gore on Saturday night. Shaq's cut off from the cookies. Mark, they're all, they're all yours from here on out. Well, I don't know. Shaq doesn't probably know. Shaq knows a lot about football ratings, but he doesn't know about how ratings work on these, uh, these podcasts and things like that. But, you know, <laughs> He just picked against Fairview when they've got about a 98 cum uh, in Fairview watching the show tonight. So uh, they're all going to know Shaq's name. And and then, my goodness, I hope that he doesn't have to play them next year because uh, they would probably really come after him. Well, I hope we play him because I don't mean we're probably deep in the playoffs. So that'll be cool. But um, I've stood on the sidelines against Fairview before and listened to their their fans, you know. So I, I kind of know my place with them anyway. So I, I doubt I uh, – I doubt I, uh, you know, made any more enemies in Fairview tonight than I already had. <laughs> I, I, re- I remind Shaq I, often. Shaq's going it, to, it's just, this is going to be, I mean, this is going to be kind of sad because this is going to be a, a, about 700 and something days that Shaq has been uh, the only man that holds the uh, Class A gold ball. So uh, he's going to have to give that up after the game. Yep. Yeah, I will. Uh, I won't be there to give it up, but uh, I'll, I'll do it in the, I'll do it in spirit, but. I, I tell you what, both, both these coaches are great. These teams are really good. Uh, whoever wins Saturday night will be a great representation of Class A, and and uh, they, they do it the right way. So I'm 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 pulling for I'm pulling for a great game, and I'll I'll text whatever coach wins and congratulate congratulate them, and text the other one and tell them, hey, I'm sorry, and you know, try to. There's always next year. Coach Craig, let's go to you. Class A, Ferry versus Gore. <clears throat> well. Uh... Fairview, Fairview's just going to have to name something Shackelford in town, and then that way, that way they can get him to pick, pick that way, and pick their side on that. But uh, um, what a, you know, what a great game! You know, two two great teams coming in. I I remember I know Shaq took Gore last week. I was riding Hominy on that. Had been riding Hominy most of the year through that, and uh, what a what a big uh, big victory for Gore and. Uh, you know, and then how impressive was the victory by Fairview over Colcord after what they did to Ringling? I, you know, that was that was kind of shocking that uh, Colcord went down there and just absolutely dismantled Ringling, and then uh, for Fairview to do what they did to him the next week, that was uh, that was pretty impressive. So, um, I've I've been on I've been on Fairview. I haven't been on Gore. I I haven't gotten the ability to watch them on film. I go by what some of these guys have said and some other in some others input on them. And obviously they've got a very good football team, very well coached. And, uh, but, uh, <clears throat> I'm, I can't buck the trend with the other Fairview ends on the, uh, is that how you say that on the, on the show? But, uh, I just think Fairview's on a roll, uh, playing really well right now, but, uh, you know, Another one of those games that we could say, hey, I, I, I could see both either team winning this game, but, uh, you know, we got to pick one. And uh, I think Fairview's on a roll and uh, coming off some very big victories. And uh, I look forward to pull one more off. Coach Jones. Yeah, you know, this is uh, this is a tough one. Uh, even, even tougher now that I'm looking at three Fairview guys. So, you know, I think for me, um, you know, really both play really good defense. And, and, uh, you know, I I think both have scored their share of points. Then I go back, you know, I may be the only guy for the last, you know, five years that has sat at UCO and watched every single state championship game. Um, You know, in in the the Saturday night final, um, every year has been a a tight, uh, close football game. And and one of the better football games last Saturday's was, 
as well. And so I look for this to be a, a heck of a game. I, you know, looking at this, I thought Cole Cord watched them on tape last week was, was a, a really uh, good football team. And then for Fairview to do what they did, um, I, I think in a pretty dominant fashion, to be honest with you. And then uh, watching what BT's uh, Pirates have done, um, you know, in the amount of points they've scored, but then coupling that with a really good defense because they haven't given up a lot of points. I think uh, what the most points they've given up was to Woodland at, at 20. And so, uh, man, you couple a, a great offense with, with a good defense. And then I also believe, um, you know, I, I'm probably anti Shaq on the whole, um, you know, I believe run of the football uh, wins championships, although I think he won a couple of championships being able to dominate the run game. But, you know, I, I'm going to go on this. I'm going to go with Gore. Uh, I stuck with him last week. Uh, I'm not getting any cookie bars anyway, so uh, I'm going with them. And, and uh, you know, I, I hope it's a heck of a game and wish both teams uh, great luck. I, I think this will be uh, one of the best one out of all the games um, that we see this year. Coach Minnell. Yeah, so um, I'm just going to do some keys to the game. from, And I, I'm not done watching film. I'm, I'm going to help call this game uh, for the radio broadcast. So I, I look forward to diving a little bit deeper. Um, I just kind of got started on Gore. You know, we are over here. We we played Fairview every year, junior high, high school. Um, in fact, the last thing we did 11 man was go to camp with them last summer and before we had a couple of injuries in the summer. And uh, man, they're good. I, I'm, I'm glad I don't have to try to stop those guys anymore. Uh, I One time in junior high, we just went full out wing tee and tried to snap the ball every one minute to see if the refs would actually just you know, count the clock or not, just to try to stop this group. They were seventh graders back then. And I, I bet we ran 30 plays in the first half and they ran one and we were down 16 to zero at half. Um, <laughs> and it's like, what do you do? I mean, Bernard was running RPOs in seventh grade. So I, yeah, they're explosive. Uh, and we've grown up watching those guys. Uh, they do it right over there. Um, just like coach Tyler does at Gore from what I've heard you guys say. Um, the town support is incredible. Uh, there's a lot of heart stories over there too, you know, that, that are getting rooted for, you know, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of support and love for those kids. Um, just like you guys were describing is, is going, both towns are doing that right now. And that's what I love about football is that you have literally thousands of people behind these guys and they feel like they can do anything, um, which is what's so fun about watching this game. I think both teams are going to, they play so they play even bigger than they are. They're both got some size and they just play with intensity uh, Coach Shaq talked about Fairview's defense. They play so fast uh, to the ball. Um, they've always been like that. Um, and so, I, you know, that's going to be really fun to watch, too. Gore has some size, man. Uh, I was kind of looking, you know, I've only been through a couple films. I'm not through Hominy yet, but uh, I think it's 50 and 55 on the D-line. My gosh, those guys are big and strong. And uh, they got a couple of linebackers uh, I was looking at that get to the ball real quick. I think one's number five, number eight. Um and, you know, getting to watch, I've always, you know, saw Vianne getting really far in the playoffs, and I always wondered, you know, what kind of offense is that? And they're there every year. Um, and to watch uh, Coach Tyler's offense these couple games and and to look at some stats here on Max Preps, like they can run the football. Uh, the uh, the Cooper kid, the the quarterback who can run and throw, which is a lot how Bernard is from Fairview. I think that's going to be interesting. Cooper's a little bit bigger, it looks like, just by film. And then uh, the, the Dozier kid, number 10, man. People slide off of him. I mean, he's averaging 13 yards a carry. Uh, so it's makes he's one of those runners that kind of makes makes it look easy, I guess you'd say. Then, you know, we grew up trying to stop Perez. Like the last time we played Fairview and Varsity, that kid was a freshman just running his nose up into our senior linebackers and not caring. That's a tough kid. And I see now as a senior, he's, you know, had you know 1,750 yards. So it's really cool to see those kids grow up doing it right, being strong in the weight room, having a whole community behind you. Um and so to me, it's going to be, you guys all said it, there's going to be a play or two in there where someone makes it and uh, it's going to make the difference because they're both, they both got size on the line, man. Fairview's, Fairview's guy, they got a, they got a sophomore in there too. That's just uh, plays. I, I love when I see it, you know, whenever a team's had a, uh, I don't know if you guys ever see this on film, but when they've had a, a helmet refurbished into another color and like all of it's like cracked off because there's a lineman that's in there just doing work. And that's Bowden Miller for me. It's like half of his, he's a sophomore in there and half of his helmet is orange, even though they wear black helmets. And I see him in there with Pettis and uh, you know, who's the other kid in there. I saw Cottrell, Wallace, Nelson. Those guys are good up front. 
and they're aggressive. They're athletic too. Um, so to see them going against some of the size that Gore has, 22 seniors over there, Fairby got 50 kids on their team almost. Um, like Shaq said on here many times, that is a recipe for success. So I can't wait to call this game. It's going to be really fun. Yeah, a couple notes on this on this football game. Sorry, Shaq, go ahead. I was going to say, I know, I know Adam's listening somewhere. If we could get Jake to send some money to Fairview so Robert can get the poor kid with the orange helmet of one that's painted. <laughs> I mean, I know times are tough up there, but uh, maybe we can get a new – you know, Revo speed before Saturday night. They, they Stillwater had a few of those too. So I think that's quickly becoming a trend. There are probably 50 kids with that same look this week. Badge probably at home chipping at like banging a helmet against each other. Yeah. 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 We're not probably doing that. Okay. Off of it. <laughs> probably the same helmet that Jay wore uh, in 1998. <laughs> no chance. Those things cut your head. <laughs> Well, hey, a couple notes about this Fairview Gore game. Uh, Jay mentioned it a minute ago. Adam Deesahorse, uh, Jay, and, I, and myself will be calling that game for Squirtle. You can uh, listen to that broadcast for free on, on the audio version, fairviewyellowjackets.tv, squirtle.tv, or the Squirtle app. So if you're at home or even in the stadium and want to listen to uh, three old Fairview guys talk about the glory days uh, and, and try to call a, a new age game, then, then feel free to, to tune in to us and – and uh, we'd love to have you listen. Also, uh, we are Squirtle is going to be hosting a, a tailgate and preview show on Saturday from 2 to 5 p.m. for Fairview alumni and fans. Uh, the, the event's going to include <clears throat> guests and some past coaches, uh, players, and alumni are going to join us for interviews. And that will be held at Maples Nixon Decent Horse Law Firm in Edmond. That's 15401 North May Avenue in Edmond, about a mile from uh, Quell Springs Mall on 150th in May. So be sure to uh, to join us if you want to come to the pregame uh, tailgate. And also uh, we'll be done by five there. And you can head on over to uh, to UCO, maybe maybe get in some Texas Roadhouse first and uh, hit up hit up a, a hopefully a, a fair view, a fair view win. All right. Let's go to uh, some of our. Uh, recaps from the championship games from last week. Let's start with uh, 6A1 and, and Coach Jones. What a statement win by Bixby, 69-9 over Owasso. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't use the term elite very often, um, but I think Bixby, uh, especially this year, uh, is as close to elite as I've seen. Uh, you know, I go back to when we played them uh, week four. <laughs> you know, it's kind of an ominous feeling when you turn off the tape and I'm a defensive guy, and, you know, we go to our full staff meeting and our offensive coordinator looks at him and says, Coach, we can't do anything against them. Um, you know, not a great uh, feel, but then you get into the tape and you just watch uh, how good they are. And, uh, you know, the worst thing I think that happened uh, to Owasso was obviously the loss that they uh, that Bixby uh, took to Jinx. I think from then on um, they were locked in. They got the monkey off their back and, you know, really just uh, dismantled um, – the pack from there on out. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, what coach Montgomery's built there uh, is impressive to be able to step up a class uh, and do it in the fashion that he did it this year is a testament to, to not just him and his staff, but obviously the kids uh, that they have in that program and what they're continuing to build um, just do so much on offense, overwhelm you uh, and then play so incredibly fast on defense and physical. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I can't say enough good things about them. One of the best teams I've seen in 20 years. Um, you know, they they definitely earned it, and uh, they deserve all the accolades that they get. Um, you know, that team's going to go down in, in Big Speed history as, I think, one of the better teams they've ever had, and it's going to be hard for uh, future teams to contend with that. But uh, hats off to them. It was – it was. Uh, I wish to say it was a great game. You know, obviously Coach Blankenship did a great job of getting his team there, um, but uh, it was all Big Speed uh, from the jump, and, and – uh, a little bit of a boring game, but uh, uh, proud of those guys and uh, proud of both coaching staffs. I think it was a, um, a a great year for 6A1. And, again, to jump up to that level and to do what they did, uh, had to the Bixby. Great football team. Mark? Uh, I do want to say thanks to Shaq because this week we were at UCO. Uh, I think that the media, they gave us potatoes one day, and I was looking for this thing that we had when I was in Boy Scouts. It was like a soup cup. And so I was like going to go hold it out and see if they like ladle me some soup in there. And then Shaq takes me down to the second floor where Justin's running things. 
And it, it was like they had, I don't know who catered it, maybe Red Lobster or uh, Charleston's or something like that. But um, one of the guys from the third floor actually went down in the back way and snuck in the second floor and took up a plate of some of the finest cheeses. And maybe there was some shrimp cocktail or lobster on there, something like that. So the coach's place on the second floor is where you need to be. Um, that was fantastic. So uh, I, I I can't add anything to what Justin said. Uh, it was a it was a great year for my Bixby. To me, um, I was just pretty. I was pretty shocked that Jinx beat them in the regular season. Um, and I know how good Jinx is and what their tradition is all about. So uh, Bixby, I think, is going to be continue to be pretty tough in the next couple of years with the way that Lawrence built that program. Andy left us. We lost our host. <laughs> I guess I guess we all just take over now, don't we? <laughs> hey, go ahead, Coach. Uh, go You're ahead, Jeff. Uh, your turn. So you, you get to you get to uh, narrate from now on on this. <laughs> yeah, what a great season for Bixby. Just uh, it, there's not enough you can say about the year they had, and just uh, uh, and a, a huge game in a state championship game to do what they did. So. Uh, just a congrats to uh, a tremendous job by their staff, their players, and everybody involved. And uh, congratulations to to Owasso for making it. That was a that was a big turnaround. And uh, I know we've talked about how hard it is to beat somebody twice. And uh, you know Bixby Bixby didn't leave any room for doubt on that. And uh, they they put the uh, they just kind of put their stamp on that game and uh, and, and finished it off in a hurry. And uh, and let everybody know they're for real, and and they really were. That was a, that was an impressive impressive season by Bixby. I am back. I think Gore uh, Gore fans cut my internet there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Shack, let's go to you. Six A one Bixby uh, over at Wasso. Uh, I can remember in uh, twenty fifteen we uh, we beat Ringling in the semifinals. I think that was the year we had like nineteen kids playing football. Um, and uh, I looked at Coach Robertson, and I was like, hey, we're going to the finals. We get Stratford. <laughs> and I think it was 59 to 17 or something like that in the finals, uh, which is probably a little bit of the way Coach Blankenship and those guys felt, uh, you know, when they won, when they beat Union in six overtimes. You know, hey, this is really awesome. Now we get to go play Bixby, and it's not going to be awesome. But um, making it to the finals is, like Coach Craig said, is, is an unbelievable accomplishment. Um, I asked Mark this on Friday night if uh, Coach Blankenship's ever been beat by 60 before. Um, and I would venture to say not, which really tells you what kind of what kind of football team Bixby was. I, I said it last week. I thought the finals were played the week before whenever uh, whenever Bixby beat Jinx. And I think, uh, you know, just for Jinx, number one, to be able to beat him, and number two, be able to only get beat by two touchdowns in the semifinals really tells you a lot about, like Mark said, their history and their tradition and just their their pride. Uh, but Bixby's, a, they're a different animal. They have been for what seven years now. The pictures of those guys, you know, with all the with all the gold footballs, uh, is is really incredible. And hats off to Coach Montgomery and those guys for what the what they're able to to do and continue to build. And I think one thing that goes a little bit unnoticed is they're doing this with, and they're the they're the smallest team in six A one, which you know ten years ago would a team in the middle of six A have even have a chance to be competitive, let alone dominate a class, I would say no. So, uh, for, you know, what they've been able to accomplish is, is, is pretty, is pretty incredible. So I'm, I'm extremely impressed with, with the job that they've done. And I know that, uh, you know, coaches from around the state go to Bixby to find out, you know, what's the, what's the secret sauce. And it's pretty simple. They, uh, they get bigger and faster and stronger than everybody else. And, um, when you can do that, you can, Mix in a couple of freaks, and you can be pretty good. So I would be shocked if – hopefully I'm not sitting on here talking about it next year, but if we are, then, um, you know, <laughs> I, I bet somebody's going to be talking about, you know, Bixby in the finals again. All right, 682. This was a really good football game uh, with the Pioneers coming out on top, 26-21. Mark Rogers, I believe you called this game. Is that right? Yeah, uh, I did. I'm. It was a good game. I thought it would be close. It was close. Uh, Stillwater, Shaq picked Stillwater, told him that that was a really good pick. I think that the coaching staff at Stillwater, um, between uh, Charlie Johnson, uh, the defensive coordinator, Clarence Holly, 
uh, Tucker Bernard came up with a defense that I think is can kind of get you off your kind of off of your uh, comfort zone. And Chalks did a really good job in the first half of running the ball, and, and they had three or four plays. But I thought that they got away from it in the second half and kind of panicked. And once they panic, then Stillwater is kind of like a, a pool of sharks when there's blood in the water. They just they come finish they come finish it off. So. It was a good run by Choctaw as the first uh, state championship for Stillwater since 1967. Um, they had a, a really good year. I think Greenwood, Arkansas may have won a, a championship in Arkansas that they played. They're at least in it deep this year. So uh, um, good job from, mm-hmm. for uh, for Stillwater to win in kind of a terrible situation. Both Gundys had knee surgeries uh, this week. Um, Gage and uh, I don't know if I'm breaking any news here, but also uh, Gunner. Um, had an injury in practice this week. So um happy to see uh you know you get it's pretty cool that both Kale, Mike, and now Gage have won state championship. So congratulations to Stillwater on that. Coach Jones. Yeah, you know, uh, again, uh really uh close game. I, I you know, going back to um the way that and, and kind of anticipating in that game, uh Stillwater's defense uh, being a a slight edge and, and being able to to slow down the chalk to offense, I think was a big difference. And then I think you flip back into the second half and really watched uh, what Stillwater was able to do uh, through their hurry up, but, but still, you know, pushing the tempo, uh, but running absolutely downhill, uh, you know, through Choctaw. And, and I think they knew in the second half uh, they wanted uh, to, to make Choctaw earn it and uh, they were going to make them pay for it. Uh, as far as the physicality. And, and I think that's what Stillwater really did a nice job of the second half um, uh, is increasing the physicality, running the football, uh, and then obviously the turnovers. So, I mean, that's what that defense does. Uh, Coach Holly uh, is, is one of the very best at it. And I think, again, you go back and you kind of look at uh, what Stillwater's been building. I, you know, I think they parallel Bixby a lot uh, in, in their building process. They just happen to be right there next to Bixby. Um, you know, obviously – uh, you know, Coach Holly liked this analogy that shark to uh, jump to different waters and allowed uh, Stillwater to kind of be the big shark. And uh, you know, they did exactly what they want to do. Uh, they're they're built on. If you haven't ever paid attention to what Stillwater does, but uh, their whole eat the captain philosophy and drag you into the deep end and drown you, I think, is uh, what they try to do. Uh, late, it, it was a uh, you know a, a great job by Choctaw to try to come back, but uh, really uh, thought Stillwater executed well down the stretch, and it was great to see them win a state championship. Coach Shaq, you pick Stillwater and Pioneers uh, pull it out. Yeah, I just thought um, – I thought two things. I thought, number one, I thought off the up front on offense they, they were going to be better. Um, I thought they would be extremely well well coached uh, and just the mentality they have. I, I think Coach Kaywood does a great job of kind of – knowing who they are and being really comfortable in their skin. And I think that's what they did in the second half. They, you know, they opened up the game and they were kind of trying to spread it out and do some different things and came out of halftime and got, got with a fullback and, and a tailback and just said, Hey, we're going to come downhill and we're going to, we're going to play our style of football. And I think that's that. And like, like Justin said, the turnovers, I, I, somebody told me, I think it was Justin showed me a tweet where, uh, Stillwater had over 40 turnovers this year, which is incredible. Um, yeah, the, the, you know, the season was 43 after that. Yeah, stage. Four, 43 turnovers is, is unbelievable. You know, when you're able to do that and give your offense, you know, that many more opportunities to score and they got a short field a couple different times against Choctaw and, and really paid and really paid it off. But I'm, those guys are great friends of mine. I was, I was really excited. Uh, for them to be able to to win a state championship, uh, you know, Stillwater is a kind of a unique town, aside from you know America's brightest orange. You know, just the the high school itself and the the, the people there. It's a you take the take the kids take the students at OSU, and it's a it's a small town. And then I think they really kind of act that way. And um, so it was it was cool to see that uh, and see those guys be able to to bring a gold ball back to Stillwater. I was pretty happy for them. Coach Craig. Yeah, I was I was impressed with Stillwater's uh, game and and game plan and the way they approached the game. I, you know, I'd gone and gone out on that limb and picked Choctaw and just thought maybe they would be able to, in my mind, pull up an upset, which it really would have thought that would have been what it would have been. But uh, you know, hats off to the to the coaching staff and players at Stillwater for, and they're you know I thought they. I thought they executed well. I thought they played well. I thought they did the things that they were needed to do that they needed to do to win the football game. 
and uh, obviously put a lot of pressure on Choctaw and they were not able to answer. But, uh, you know, hats off to those guys and congratulations on a, on a great win. Like you said, it, you know, it <clears throat> with Bixby kind of rolling around over there with them for a while, it was kind of hard to break to break free and, you know, you kind of get them out of the way and uh, it was still water's turn. And uh, I think they were next in line to, to step up and obviously they stepped up well and, uh, and took on that challenge and, uh, and, and, and reap the benefits of that. And so congratulations Stillwater on a great victory. All right, we'll move on to 5A. And by the way, I'm not purposely ignoring Jay uh, with these files. Like I said, he was, he was coaching last week and this weekend he's been preparing to call the uh, Fairview Gore game. So, we're giving Jay a pass on these um, on these last weekend state championship games. Five A Carl Albert returned to dominance, forty nine to seven over McAllister. Mark, man, Carl Albert got better as the season went along. I mean, it's the same same kind of um, I, I guess script for Carl Albert that they've had forever and ever and ever. Coach Dunn played for Coach Rose and. Uh, a lot of former assistants or former coaches are still assistants there. They've done a good job and they challenge themselves early with a tough schedule. And then by the end of the season, uh, they're playing their best football. They kind of build up their confidence. But Xavier Robinson is a stud. He's a division one. He's a power five running back uh, that hasn't really gotten the offers that I think uh, he deserves yet. I, I thought the is is uh, another guy. You have to focus on so many different things uh, with him that, you know, he's a 210 pound running back of his own. So you have to tackle a couple of guys that are that big and it's incredibly difficult to do. Um, and, and then you've got the the outside guys on that team. They've got tight ends and uh, uh, you've got uh, Washington. That's a sophomore. That's really good. James is going to go to Iowa state and play. Uh, he had a big game, so many weapons, incredible job. Um, and I, I think that in a, a classification that was really tough, they kind of emerge as, as the best team. Um, McAllister's got a good program. Two years in a row getting to the state finals without their best player this year, who they lost two weeks ago, Eric McCarty. Um, I thought played hard and and really hung around for a little bit in the first half before it was just – they were worn down. Too much Carl Albert on the day. But uh, another state championship for Carl Albert, and they're it's, it's just kind of stupid. Of the semifinals and finals, I think their record is now 34-2 and two in the last 36 games they lost last year to Collinsville in the semis. Um, it's their only semifinal loss. So if they don't get beat in the quarterfinals, it's, it's there's the win. Coach Craig. Yeah, that, uh, you know, Mark said it last week with, you know, with Carl Albert, I think it was 16 and one in state championship games. And, you know, geez, why, how can you, you know, how can you bet against that? And, uh, and another thing Mark said, and, you know, and spending some time there, you know, my five years there, at Carl Albert, you know, we were able to win two. Uh, the last two years I was there before I left, you know, you thought it may, might be, you know, it might fall apart after I left, but they went ahead and won five more <laughs> after that. So, so I had very little to do with that, obviously. But, uh, yeah, they, you know, and I said it last week, there's just something about when the playoffs come around, they flip a switch. And I've never seen, I've never seen a place – be more consistent with the ability to flip a switch when the playoffs come around and just turn it on into, into a different level and just play at a different level. And Mark said that they, they, they get better as the year goes along. They, they, that's what they do. They've done it consistently. They've done a year in a year out. They might start out slow. They may win. They may lose two or three somewhere along the line and they're in the, and they're in the finals, but uh, they, they just have a recipe that works um, it's kind of like the Bixby thing now, you know, they're just what they do and their kids buy in their kids believe. And I mean, I, you can't bet against them. As Mark said, past the quarterfinals, they get past quarterfinals. It's their trophy. And, uh, so if you're playing them, you, you gotta be ready. Cause, uh, you know, the guys they put on the field last week were just phenomenal the, you know Xavier's just he, he's just a mark said he's a power five running back he's a he's a dude and he, he's almost untackable and I think I think I think uh, uh, we said that today on the untackable is that a word I don't even think that's a word is it that you works can't tackle the guy we'll just we'll just say that but uh yeah he's uh 
he's a he's a next level guy and and it's nice to hand that off but he's not the only guy they got and they proved that uh, in their in their championship run and defensively did a great job um set their offense up and their offense took advantage and uh just a just a complete complete season for those guys and you know hats off to those guys a lot of friends a lot of some former staff guys of mine on there and and uh and a lot of friends on that and congratulations to coach Dunn on on, you know, on coming back and getting his first and that was that was awesome so good season for the titans coach Shaq. uh is coach Dunn the first alumni uh head coach to win it carl at carl albert did i read first, that somewhere yeah. First one, first alumni to, to win a state championship there. That, that's really cool. Um, and good job by Carl Albert by bringing back one of your own. I mean, if you want to keep the train on the tracks, that's probably the probably the easiest way to go about doing that. But, you know, I we, we talked about it last week, and we'll talk about it again when we get to 4A. I mean, there's just something about certain teams um, when the playoffs roll around, and Carl Albert's definitely one of those. You know, and if you can't figure out a way to get them out early on, then you're probably not going to, so. Great job by Carl Albert. Uh, you know, I, one of the most impressive things I've ever seen in my life is we went to uh, Carl Albert hosted something. I can't remember if it was an area or state, first round state tournament. I think that's what it was back in 09 or 10. I think our girls were playing in it. And you walk into Carl Albert's gym and their wall is just covered with banners. And you don't hang a banner at Carl Albert unless you win a state championship. And it, it's wall to wall banners in Carl Albert's gym. So they've, They've got it figured out over there. They uh, they understand what what winning is and what that culture's like. And once you can once you can get that rolled in, it, it's pretty impressive. And so great job by them. Remind you, just like the Echo Dome in Fairview, right, Shaq? Yeah, similar except for the banner. <laughs> <laughs> How do you class five A? Me. Yes, sorry. Coach. Okay, good. Uh, you know, again, I'm going to echo what everybody else has said. Uh, have seen, um, you know, I, I think the term that comes to mind is that championship DNA. And uh, you know, I, I think uh, I've, I've personally experienced what what they're able to do at Carl Albert. I think uh, Jinx has it. They play different in the in the uh, in the playoffs. You know, I would like to say Bixby does, but I really think Bixby plays that way all year, or at least they did this year. But um, you know, it, it was one of the things I, I enjoy at the state championship games is I get to walk down on the field pregame and talk to both staffs. And, um, you know, it's just a different feeling when you, uh, you know, when you're looking at the Carl Albert sideline and you see all the former uh, coaches and alumni that are there and on the sideline, you know, Coach Corley, at, you know, was sitting on the bench with his jacket on, his legs crossed, like, you know, it's just another game. And, um, you know, the expectation there is great. Um, the demand is great and they, uh, you know, they exceed the demand and, and uh, the expectation. And uh, Coach Dunn, you know, I remember when he came back to Oklahoma and was at Dell City, um, really, I thought, did some things right, had to make some tough decisions early, um, you know, really got that program going and then to slide over to your alma mater when it was, was impressive. And, you know, I also, I, I think hats off to McAllister to be able to uh, get through um, McGinnis, who I thought everybody kind of had pegged to play in that game against Carl Albert again, was was a, a great feat, especially without, without your best uh, your best player. Um, and then to come back and make two finals runs in a row, I think Forrest is doing a great job down there. But, uh, you know, again, Carl Albert, you know, the other thing I, th I think pregame that stuck out to me is just the, the sheer size. Um, and, and Carl Albert's always uh, been pretty big, but those tight ends that they have, uh, they have a corner that's humongous. The running back is is is, is can go and and I mean he's a freak, but he's he's got the size to go with it. And uh, you know the the guy that impressed me the most, I thought that had a really good game was DeQuazy and some of the things he did uh, on some of the keeps off the zone option stuff. But uh, again, uh, I think they won in every phase of the game. Um, they 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 played really sound and um, you know same song different different dance, but. Uh, you know, hats off to them in, in uh, what is that, their 17th, I think they won this this year. So great job by them. Well, Coach Shaq has talked a lot about those playoff teams that you don't want to face uh, as you get into late November, early December. Chase us to 4A. Wagner with a late field goal gets 24-21 uh, victory over Cushing and another gold ball for Wagner. Mark? This is the stunner of the weekend. I think uh, 
I, I don't know what you can say other than tradition that maybe Cushing had some jitters because they they had some turnover issues early and it's not kind of typical of what they what they did this season. Uh, it, you know, uh, Coach Craig will know way more about this than I do, but uh, but all that I think, you know, it. it, it I think this is uh, something I've kind of watched and learned covering high school over all these years is that uh, the belief that you will win may be as important as anything. Um, and Cushing hadn't won a state championship. And I, I think they thought that they were pretty good even a couple of years ago, but yet they still kind of met with some adversity in the playoffs. And I, I don't, you know, it, it, I think that it's a well-coached team, a lot of talent on that team, but there's just something about having the confidence that uh, Wagner did. And, um, Great win for them. Great, great job for Coach Condit. Coach Craig. Yeah, that was obviously the stunner of the whole, I think, of the whole football playoffs that uh, that Wagner was able to come back and pull off the victory that they were able to pull off. Because, you know, Cushing really hadn't even been challenged really all year long and uh, had dominated everybody that they had played. And then I know talking to Coach Condit after their game, you know, the, the one thing about, uh, you know, the other guys, the other coaches on here could probably reiterate this. You know, the one thing about when you when you take a 42 to nothing beat down and you get to play again, there's a lot of things you're going to do different. There's a lot of things you're going to change. There's there's some adjustments you're going to make. We need to do this better. You know, talking to Coach Condict. After that loss, you know, he said, we need to throw more quick game. We need to, we need, we should have thrown more quick game. We should have done that. You know, obviously it looked like they threw a lot more quick game in, in this one, but there's some adjustments you make when you win 42 to nothing. I don't, there's not a whole lot you're going to shake up. There's not a whole lot you're going to change. And I think Cushing stayed with their recipe. They stayed with, with what they've done all year long. Uh, Wagner made some changes, made some adjustments. Um, I, I can't remember the time of possession discrepancy uh, exactly, but, uh, you know, obviously that was in, way in Wagner's favor, you know, keep the ball away from Cushing. They made some mistakes early with some turnovers, like Mark said. Um, Wagner was able to play keep away. And then also to put points on the board, that was the biggest thing. I, I was really surprised that uh, that they were able to, to push through and, and, and put points on the board. And that uh, – you know, there's a lot to be said for for tradition, like Mark said, like Shaq said. You know, there's certain teams at this time of the year you just don't want to mess with them, and uh, I, I think there's a belief, there's a belief system in Wagner. They believe they believe in winning. They believe they're going to win. They believe they can win, and I really felt like they 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 did that. Their coaches did a great job of preparing them for that, and uh, you know, they went in with a belief that hey, we're in this now. You know, Cushing could have quelled that real quick, but, uh, you know, obviously they kind of let him hang around. And then I think as they let him hang around, the belief in Wagner's belief system began to grow. And, and they're, hey, we're in this. Hey, we're one or two plays away from being in this game or we're one or two away from winning it. So, you know, when you when you deal with teams like Wagner and, and you, give them a, you give them an opportunity – and they're dang sure going to take care of it and take advantage of it. And they did. And, uh, man, hats off to those guys. What a tremendous turnaround. That was uh, that was an unbelievable victory. I, I think that was all I heard from everybody was, wow, I just – I can't believe that that game. And uh, and it, it was a big-time big time upset and a big-time win on Wagner's part. Coach Jones. Yeah, you know uh... – I, again, before the game, had a chance to talk to to Dell and, and Rusty both, and you know the one thing uh, you know Coach Condit kept saying before the game is just how explosive uh, you know Cushing was and what they didn't do right the first time. And, and uh, I'm going to tell you this: he 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 knows uh, what he's doing. Obviously, he's got a lot of championships to prove that. But the one thing that he he understands is how to get his team to believe. Um, and he told his team walking off the field pregame. Uh, we just got to get them to the third quarter. We got to keep it close, get them to the third quarter. Um, you know, we we were on the sideline, walked up, listened to him, um, you know, after the third quarter uh, when the game was tied and, and just, you know, tell him, hey, let, let's keep it close, get to the fourth quarter, we're going to win this thing. Um, and, and when he says those things, he, he believes them. And, and the kids, the coaches, uh, the fans, everyone believes them. And you could really feel that game, uh, the momentum turn 
um, uh, and, and the tighter it got, the more confidence that Wagner had. Um, you know, really, uh, I think the tell of that game was right before the first half is over. Uh, Wagner's able to uh, – they, they throw a fade, uh, really move down the field uh, with less than a minute left, have one second left on the clock to score to – to cut that lead. Um, and then that allows them to come out and play a physical style of football the second half, really keep it close to the vest and own the time of possession because they were only down one possession. Um, and, and I think what, um, you know, the other thing I, I kind of gleaned from Coach Condit was that, you know, I, I kind of asked him to compare this team to his other teams. He said, you know, this team is, is kind of our, uh, quote, junkyard dog team. They're not afraid to mix it up. Um, you know, the, 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 I believe the quarterback's the state champion wrestler. And uh, that's a great recipe, um, you know, when you can keep it close and you can, you can muddy up uh, the waters and uh, give yourself a chance at the end. Um, I have no doubt that, um, you know, in, in the last time out there in the fourth quarter, uh, he said, we're either going to kick a field goal and win this or we're going to take it to overtime and win it. And uh, what a run by the quarterback to set him up there uh, for that field goal, uh, standing behind the goalpost, that ball. Uh, kind of flutters in, but, uh, you know, what a game, um, you know, hats off to, to Wagner and the way that they were able to prevail, but, you know, really the firepower that Cushing had, uh, you know, it's really interesting. Uh, you know, it's very rare that you see a bunch of skill guys bigger than the offensive line, um, but Cushing's skill is, um, and they can run. The quarterback is unbelievable, but, uh, you know, it was just uh, Wagner's night. They got Cushing uh, into the game plan that they wanted. And, and uh, I know that uh, Rusty and his staff, this one, I heard him for a long time. Um, it's tough to get over these. But, uh, man, what a great football game. Probably the best game of the weekend um, and, and just really fun to watch. Hey, Adam, it sounds like Squirrel needs to hire Coach Jones for a silent reporter uh, on Saturday night. I mean, he's, he's in the huddles. He's, he's in the locker rooms before the games. I mean, <laughs> this is impressive stuff here. That's that's in between. He's, he's, not the leaving that, he's not leaving that spread on the second. I was say, <laughs> sideline or a red lobster. Got a <laughs> shrimp cocktail going on. I don't want yeah. to go down the sideline. <laughs> leave the shrimp cocktail. You guys can't afford him. <laughs> fair, fair enough, uh, Coach Shaq. I think uh, we. I don't think we've heard it from you on four A Wagner over Cushing. Yeah, see, I knew I should have gone with the General Lee. And blew it. That was my <laughs> my initial response. Uh, I could have I could have bucked the trend and looked like a genius. Um, and I I'm like everybody else. I looked at the score early on and was wow. And then as it kept going, uh, it was even it was even more of a more of a surprise that Wagner was able to pull pull off the upset. But you know, like everybody said, I mean they they've got a recipe that that works for them, uh, which I think is. You know, not everybody's recipe is the same, but what, if you can if you can figure out what that is, and there there are places like Wagner, like Carl Albert, where uh, they've figured out what that recipe is, and you can get your kids to buy into it, and uh, you know, and and believe you're going to win, and then take games like when you get beat forty two nothing. That probably hasn't happened a lot in Wagner over the last ten or fifteen years. So I'm sure Coach Condit did uh, his due diligence and probably showed that score to his kids, not only the week of the finals, but probably the, you know, week five and six and seven and eight and, you know, however many weeks it was between the, the time they, they got beat and they got to play him again. So uh, it, it's hard. I, I said it earlier. I, I know from experience, it's, it's really hard to beat somebody twice. Uh, it's even more difficult to do that when you, when you win the first game really, really handily. Um, they're, I mean, they're high school kids and uh, you know, they're, regardless of how many times you tell them it's going to be different, uh, they don't believe it's going to be different until it is. And then once they kind of figure it out, it, sometimes it's a little bit too late. So uh, I think, you know, like Coach Jones said, you know, Coach Morgan and Coach Fry and those guys, this is going to sting for a long time. But I also think you got to have an appreciation for what for what you accomplished. Making it to the finals is, is no joke. It's really hard. Guys coach their entire careers and never do it. Um, so when you get an opportunity to do it, you need to, really kind of relish it and savor it and, and appreciate, you know, what you were able to do. So, um, you know, hats off to them for, for getting there. And, you know, Coach Condit and those guys, great, great job. You know, congratulations on, on bringing home another gold ball. Maybe they can drive it around the General Lee this weekend. <laughs> hey, just pulling up based on what, what Shaq just said there, if you go back to – I just went through back to 2011, uh, Wagner's given up. 42 points only twice 
and they won one of those games uh, against Pryor. Bethany beat them out of the playoffs. I can't. I'll, I'll look here real fast and tell you. Bethany beat them forty-two thirty-five in the twenty eighteen playoffs. So, yeah, no, they haven't been beat by forty-two. They've only given up forty-two twice. So, um, that's pretty crazy. I'm, I'm sure they were reminded of that often from that point on. All right, guys, two more classes to pick, and I, I know we'll, we'll, I know we're getting late here. We need to get these coaches out of here. They've got to figure out what movie they're going to show their classes tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> Christmas break comes up here next week. All right, 3A, uh, this game was like watching an old Big 12 uh, game as Heritage Hall put 72 up on the board to defeat Metro, 72 to 56. Mark, try to explain this one. Uh, I really can't. I mean, you had an interesting call on a, on a kickoff that went into the end zone that was recovered uh, that um, was kind of botched. But, uh, you know, 600-yard passing night for Kirk Francis in the loss. Uh, is, is that – I don't know. I, I really don't have much of an explanation for it. But uh, Heritage Hall um, has been – uh, such a great program. They haven't had a whole lot of success against Lincoln, but they didn't have to face Lincoln this year. So uh, congratulations to to Coach Bogert and the uh, and the Chargers. Coach Craig. Yeah, it, uh, I, I, I jumped on that Metro wagon and kind of rode that probably, you know, and they, they had a really good run in 2A, but, you know, I, it, it's kind of one of those heritage halls, one of those teams, I guess, you know, kind of like Wagner, like Wagner and Carl Albert we were talking about. You just, you don't bet, you don't bet against them this deep in the playoffs this time of the year. You know, we got our, <clears throat> got my share of getting to go home after heritage hall playoff games, but uh, uh, they're just, they just play it at a different level when it comes that time. I, what a, what, a, what an unbelievable game though, offensively. I, 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 I'm not sure we score 72 if nobody was on the field, but uh, uh, that's that's just uh, that was an unbelievable night by both teams. You know, just the, the, the offensive output by each of them and, and the answer just to continually answer back and forth, back and forth. But uh, you know, hats off, hats off to both of them on a great on a great accomplishment and, and great seasons. And like I said, just you know, Heritage Hall is one of those teams you just. When it comes down to state finals times, it's don't bet against them. They're they're they've got a recipe to win, and uh, they proved it again this last week. Good shot. Yeah, I, I think I I think I picked Heritage Hall last week um, for for a lot of the same reasons. They just they just seem to find a way. Um, you know, they you could argue what those what those reasons are and how those what those ways are, but they uh, they find a way kind of every year to be there at the end and. Um, you know, you give up 640 something yards passing and still win. That's a, that, that's pretty incredible. Um, it's like, you know, like Andy said, it's like watching OU play the last few years, you know, they, they just kind of, just kind of figure it out. Um, I'm just glad it ended finally. I thought maybe it was going to go till, till the next morning. Um, you know, there's a lot of kids were probably late to school. I'm sure, I'm sure David and the guys were upset about that, but uh, you know, congratulations to Heritage Hall. Great, great job, great job by both both coaching staff just getting there, and um, I'm sure they'll both be in the hunt to to do it again next year. I think Shaq was right when he said last week they were flying under the radar all year long, and they kind of like that. I think they kind of like to sneak into that one, and they kind of snuck in there under the radar. Nobody expected them to do big things and pulled one out of the hat. Coach Jones, yeah, you know. Uh, First of all, hats off to the, the Metro quarterback at, you know, 37 to 62 for what was it, 640 or 628, whatever it was. But uh, impressive offensive performance. But, you know, really, uh, Heritage Hall, the way they started that game, to be able to jump out 28-7, um, you know, had some special teams things um, that, that they were able to take advantage of and capitalize on. Obviously, um, the referees – uh, help them out there on, on one of those for Heritage. But then, you know, Heritage played great defense. Uh, you know, again, another one that I think turnovers uh, matter. Uh, and, and when you, even though you throw for that many yards, you give a, an explosive offense, some extra possessions, which uh, Heritage Hall had, uh, you know, uh, again, I think, uh, you know, that's why they won the game. And then, and then the, their ability to run the ball and play great defense as well. So, again, congratulations, Co Coach Bogert and, and uh, his staff. Hats off the Metro for what they were able to do. But, uh, yeah, long football game. I think three hours and 26 minutes, it was it was too long. 
Probably the best quarterback numbers uh, put up by anyone in the state of Oklahoma since the Baker Mayfield days uh, in Norman. Did they, yeah. Justin, did they put out the dessert menu for you guys there on the second floor after <laughs> during that game? Well, they did were actually play? cleaning. Yeah, they were cleaning up. I was worried we were going to get okay. charged. Next year. <laughs> All right. Uh, I figured Shaq would have a, a response to that Baker comment, but um, he doesn't let that one pass. So let's finish up oh. with class. <laughs> Still a little fresh. T today's probably a little fresh for you guys. I didn't want to <laughs> you know, stab you in the heart again today. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. <laughs> uh, Tipton gets a gold ball defeating Winoka 62-36 at SMU on Friday night. Coach Mendenhall, uh, we, let's go to you. I know you've uh, you've kind of covered this Class C matchup. Yeah, just a little bit. I mean, we actually – I saw Winoka on film a couple times. Um, you know, they started – Winoka – started the year out by beating Balco 48-14. And I know Balco uh, might have had a kid out or so, but it, it woke everyone up in the eight-man world because Balco's good. Um, and so, you know, Coach Allen over there is doing a great job. Uh, then they beat Ringwood, dropped 50 on Ringwood a couple weeks later, and they're in our district. So, you know, we saw that film and, uh, you know, had we have a lot of respect. Then they went ahead and beat Timberlake uh, later mm -hmm. on a couple of weeks. So we, we knew Winoka was real good. Um, but man, we scrimmaged uh, Tipton. Our scrimmage this year was Tipton and Velma Alma, who was a semifinalist in Class B on the other side. So it was pretty good, uh, uh, you know, barometer for us. And man, Tipton, that Prince. I, I, do you say it, Dway? Is that how you say his name? I was um, going to ask the same thing. He had he had himself a night. Yeah, he had about 250 yards in this uh, championship game, and uh, him and another guy, uh, Sheffield, I think his name, uh, in the backfield just for a Class C team. They ran it right down our throats one drive, and they got us. Um, and it was a hurry up, like triple option with that dude. And I mean, this guy—he was big and fast. And I don't know where he's going to go play, but uh, he's a stud. He, you know, we have a burner on our team, Judd Cheatham, and he got loose against Tipton, you know, right off the bat. And uh, I saw Prince come from the other side of the field and and just fetch him. I mean, by about twenty yards, and. Uh, you know, Coach Cheatham looked at his son, and he's like, I don't know what to do, Dad. Like, we were just like, don't hurt him. You know, that that guy was a beast. And so it doesn't surprise me that he had the game he had. Uh, I know Winoka had an unbelievable season. Um, but, yeah, that was that was a that was a crazy game. And, and kudos to them. I, I think when uh, Dway scored like three or four touchdowns in the first half, and then the other big hit I was telling you about, Sheffield, finished off with another three or four. So they were a, quite a tandem for a Class C team. I think there's the best two teams of Class C, and and uh, Tipton proved that they were they were even better. Uh, I, I thought the four Timberlake. I mean, Maud had a really outstanding season, got beat out in the second round, but uh, Timberlake, Tipton, and Winoka, I think, were the were the class of Class C. And congratulations to the Tigers to win another one. They've they've won quite a few in the last uh, twenty years. Check. Yeah, Tipton's kind of figured it out. Um, you know, I, I think they they kind of got knocked a little bit uh, about their schedule and, you know, they, they didn't play as many good teams or whatever. But um, I think once the playoffs rolled around, they kind of showed that they were they were they were better than everybody else. And it, it played out that way. And uh, I don't think they had a close game all year. So uh, hats off to those guys. Great, great season. Great season for Winoka, too. And they need to. They need to trade, change their helmets like Purdue's and put the railroad tracks down the middle for, for next year. That, that might be the difference. <laughs> Coach Coach Craig, Coach Jones, anything to add on Class C? Uh, you know, I, call, I called that one right in all my expertise. I, I told you I liked them formationally and, and what they were able to do. So uh, you got to give me that one. <laughs> we'll, we'll, give, we'll give it up to Coach Jones on his pick with uh, Tipton over one. Okay, Coach Craig? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll see if the – we can maybe talk them into those railroad tracks down the middle. Yeah. I mean, how, 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 take how them do you That's a good look, though. It is. Uh, um, I I kind of learned my lesson, I guess, when I picked Timberlake to be <laughs> Tipton, and uh, they they dismantled Tim, Timberlake and kind of proved the point that they were the cream of the crop in, in Class C, and uh, they proved it again last weekend. And, uh, you know, a great, great season, great finish, and uh, – um, you know, congratulations to both teams. I, you know, I know Shaq said it before. It's just, it's, it's quite an accomplishment to get there. And, and uh, you know, somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose. And, uh, you know, it, it was, it was a, 
it was a Tipton year, and you know, we know we had a good run, but uh, hats off to Tipton on the, on another championship. Well, Squirrels had a great run uh, this year. Had a lot of fun on this show. I want to thank uh, everyone, our viewers, especially throughout the season, and and, and Mark and, and Todd and Tom and all the guys who have uh, come on. I'm not thinking Michael Swisher, but other than that, we've we've had some really great, <laughs> some great help on the show. Thanks to the coaches who have really helped us out here throughout the playoffs. It's been great having you uh, guys on, share your insight and analysis uh, on these matchups. Basketball season is in full swing here in the state of Oklahoma, so be sure to tune into squirrel.tv to watch those matchups. I'm sure that uh, this Pick'em show will be uh, doing some basketball shows coming up, especially as we get into February and, and closer to the state tournaments uh, in, in March and April. So uh, be sure to, to, to tune into that, and we'll be uh, starting this show back up in August as we get ready for the 2023 high school football season in the state of Oklahoma. We'll see you then.